We'll start off then. Obviously, the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup are, are fast approaching. Being a former Newcastle man yourself, you, you'll have your eyes firmly fixed on their game against Brentford. How do you see that one panning out? A difficult game. I mean, um, I think with Newcastle this season, it's been you know some very good results and some possibly not good results. Mixed, mixed the two as well with uh, with performances. I think if you look at um, Brentford um, at this particular moment, you know six in the championship, um, unlucky last season. And I think then to take the hits with Ollie Watkins uh, was a big blow for them. Um, but they've got an ex-Newcastle um, player there. You know, fair enough, he was only a young lad at the time uh, in Ivan Tony, But, it, you know, he, he left Newcastle, went to Peterborough, did very well at Peterborough and got a you know very good move to, to Brentford. Had a bit of a slowish start for him. But now he's scoring goals for fun, to be quite honest. So it'll be a difficult game. I mean, I'm play, I'm, I'm just, you know, with the, the tears at this moment, it would have, you know, we don't know what's possibly going to happen with the fans, probably no fans. Uh, and it was, you know, it was, I think it's hard, for, it's been hard for Brentford because they've got this brand new stadium um, that possibly could have been, um, you know, showcased in the Premier League. But as it was, they've only just been allowed back. And now again, obviously, it's shut down again. Um, so this will be a tough game regardless. I think players are kind of semi-used now to, to having no fans there. Um, but it'll be a difficult game. It'll be a difficult game for both teams. I think it's... You wouldn't say it's a potential banana skin for Newcastle because of their form this season, which has been hitty-missy. Um, but at the same time, Brentford will, will have a tough game playing against Newcastle. But Newcastle will have a tough game playing against Brentford. Just sticking with Newcastle at the moment, obviously the, the results that they've had this season in the Carabao Cup, they've seen off two League Two sides and then they've also seen off Blackburn as well from the Championship. You wouldn't say that would be a particularly easy run considering that they made lives difficult for themselves in that game against Newport, but it's games that you would have expected them to win and to get to this stage overall. Well, you would. But I mean, it, listen... Um... <sighs> Newport have, have always done quite well in the Cups. Um, and it, it took them to, you know, penalties to, to, to actually get through to this stage. I mean, if you look at uh, Brentford's run, theirs is a lot more impressive. Um, Newcastle have struggles, you know. I think, you know, without being disrespectful to the teams Newcastle have played, they're not Premier League teams like Brentford have. Um, I mean, I think a lot of clubs... Um, tend not to put out the strongest teams if they are Premier League teams. But you've got to see a fair play. You know, the, these lads that were playing for these Premier League teams, uh, teams uh, against Brentford, you know, they, they wouldn't be at these clubs if they weren't very good players. So they've beat high-quality opposition, without a doubt. And uh, Brentford will definitely fancy the chances. Um, as I said, Newcastle, sometimes you just do not know what you're going to get with them. Um, it is pretty much like a box of chocolates, whereas you just don't know. If you took the, the menu off and slung it, you just don't know. It could be the absolute favourite one or it could be the one that you just don't like um, because that's, that's their performances. I think the biggest thing I could say about Newcastle is uh, they're very consistent by being inconsistent. And I think Brentford would probably hope for that it's going to be one of those you know, kind of offish days. You mentioned it just at the start of the interview there that a former Newcastle striker in Ivan Tony is now heading the, the Brentford front line up. What have you thought to him? I think he's got 16 goals in 21 appearances in this season's play. He's, he's been a man on fire, hasn't he, really? He is. And like I said, I mean, I think he went, what, th three, four, five games, maybe he's not scoring. Uh, and now he's, he's banging them in left, right and centre. I think, you know, it was a decent amount of money that, uh, that they paid for him. But having said that, he was banging goals in for Peterborough as well. I mean, I'm really pleased for the lad because, you know, there's not many players that'll start off as a schoolboy at a club and see the way all the way through and, and, and be at that club for a lot of years. I was one of the fortunate ones at Newcastle. I was there for 14 years, having signed, you know, when I was 13. Um, but he's showed great strength and character by realising his face doesn't fit for whatever reason or the people in front of him, they're just, you know, you know, sometimes the politics of clubs, it's one of these where we can't take a chance on them because we're in a position where we, we, we need our strikers that we can kind of de depend on or that's been there, seen it and done it. And that sometimes goes against young lads uh, in whatever position, but particularly scoring goals. Um, 
and he, he sought his future uh, elsewhere. Obviously, it's a major blow to your confidence when you have to leave because you, you feel as though that you're good enough, but feel as though you're not being given the chances. He went to Peterborough, did ever, ever so well. Um, you know, he's a big, strong boy. He can score both feet. You know, he's good in the air. He, he's got, you know, the all-round attributes to be a very good player. Uh, and as I said, I think for him to go to, to Brentford for the fee, I think maybe he's just thinking, you know, it's a big fee and uh, the pressure's on him. And then again, question marks come against him for the first couple of games because he doesn't score. But I tell you what, boy, has he proved people wrong again because, again, he's been, as you said, just absolutely on fire. Taking last night's result out of the picture against Leeds United, it was a bit of a, a one-off game, shall we say, considering the results that Newcastle have had this season. They've been encouraging, to say the least. How impressed have you been with Steve Bruce since he arrived at the club? He, he wasn't everyone's favourite choice, but he's the man in charge and, it, and he's seemingly setting the standards at the club that are a bit higher than they would have been maybe in previous seasons. Well, yeah, I think the, the unfortunate thing for Steve is he followed Rafa Benitez and the fans loved Rafa Benitez. I like Rafa Benitez. I thought he was an excellent manager, lovely man as well. But I like Steve Bruce. Um, I mean, I do stick up for him. I do sort of criticise sometimes the performances. And I think only right because some of the performances have been poor. Some of the results have been poor. But having said that, some performances have been good and some results have been very good against teams that you wouldn't expect. Um, you know, as I said, I do, I do feel as though it's, it's difficult for Steve because, you know, if he gets a result that, you know, if Rafa had done exactly the same, it would have been, it's a Rafa masterclass. Whereas Steve, it's, it's like, well, he was fortunate because X, Y, and Z. Now, I think given the fact that, let's be honest, the, the, the squad, even though I do think they're, they're an excellent bunch of good, honest pros, it's not the strongest squad in the league by any way. Um, I think what's gone on behind the scenes as well hasn't helped. You obviously COVID as well, which is everybody's had to deal with. Um, even just recently as well about the, the training ground down and then still got you know a great result after that. Um, so I, <clears throat> me personally, I think he's done a very, very good job. But I know for a fact, you know, when Newcastle fans watch this, they'll be saying he's only saying it because he's his mate and stuff like that. It's not no Steve. I wouldn't say he's a close, close friend. But I genuinely feel that he's done a decent job, given everything that's happened. And then on top of that, then moving back to this competition, it's a fantastic opportunity now to get through to the semi-finals, to maybe see a different club outside of the, the top six, maybe, for example, to go on and, and get through to the semi-finals and hopefully moving on to then going into the final and, and hopefully winning it at a club like Newcastle, Crave a trophy, don't they? A domestic trophy. Well, of course, yeah. I mean, for, for both teams, you know, it's a massive incentive because you're in the semi-final. Um, again, you, you pretty much will be pitted against the big boys because if you look at the teams, if you look at Stoke, there's Brentford, there's Newcastle, and then you've got Tottenham, Arsenal, Man City, Man United, Everton. Um, ordinarily, you'd sort of see Everton, Everton was kind of below those other top teams, but I think given this season, you've got to put them up there especially with Calvert-Lewin. And then it's an opportunity for them to, like on a one-off game, to, to reach a final. So, you know, it is a massive, massive opportunity. Um, you'll tend to think that normally with, with the big boys, that they'll, they'll put like weakened teams in initially. But I think once it gets down to the nitty-gritty, they tend to put out the big boys, the big guns. Um, so whoever goes through will have a, it will be a tough ask. But it's one of these ones, it's... it's you know, a one-off. It's not as though it's over like three games or two games or five games. It's a one game. You've got your chance. And we've seen so many upsets over the years. It, it's, it's absolutely possible. Then as well, the, the final being played at Wembley is no more fit in place to, to kind of play a final. It's a, it's a beautiful stadium. We've seen it been redeveloped and, and to where it's at now. These players have got the opportunity to get there and then make the name for themselves on the big stage, haven't they? Well, of course, yeah. I mean, obviously, with um, you know, we moved away from Wembley when it was getting redeveloped, and then obviously Tottenham took over. And, and for me, it was just like I wish they could have shared the ground with somebody else because for me, Wembley is special. It is basically for cup finals for me or playing for your country. That's how that's how I, I always saw it. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it would be ideal if there was fans in as well and we, we get to a situation because there's nothing better. I, I, I've been lucky enough to play at Wembley a, f a few times, um, whether it was from a country or whether it was in an FA Cup final. Um, and it is amazing. And, and it's an unbelievable ground. I mean, they've done it magnificently well. And I think for, for players, I mean, obviously the, the Newcastle players, the vast majority of them would have played there because of the Tottenham thing. And then finally, one of your former clubs in Manchester City are the current holders, three times winners in the last three years of this competition. What have you thought to them, especially in this competition? It seems that one at Pep Guardiola has kind of liked to make sure he gets in his trophy cabinet come March time. Well, yeah, I mean, because the league is, is I mean, the league is so up and down at this particular point as well. It's, it is ridiculous and it could pretty much be any of like four or five teams. Um, but we have noticed Manchester City do take a, a, a hell of a liking to this competition in recent years and they'll want that to continue. And any manager wants the silverware, um, you know, so whether it is the Cups and obviously the league is the hardest one to get. Uh, but Pep certainly puts out strong teams um, for this. He certainly will be. I mean, look, if, if, if Pep, Guardiola, Pep Guardiola rotates his team, you're looking at top class internationals uh, coming in anyway. Um, but of course, he'll want to try and get that in the in the cupboard again. But so will so will Mourinho, so will Ancelotti, so will all the other managers. Um, you know, but we all know what Mourinho is like. You know, he loves a trophy. His, his record uh, says that everywhere he's been, he's he's won, um, and he'd want to do that uh, with Tottenham as well. So this is a very difficult game for both Brentford and, and Newcastle. But whichever team deserves to go through and does go through. Um, still has a very tough task to, to, to get to where they want to be, which is at Wembley, and ultimately picking the trophy.